Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get getcell411.com that's getcell411.com are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home wars on our freedoms antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news views interviews and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. It's not too bad. Still don't want to be not here. for Alabama's best. Yeah. Our college football proves this. <laughs> well, if that that's the fact. metric, then yeah. I'm, I'm... That is 100% fact. That is 1,000% true. I it's didn't a that priori once. true. Let me put it that way. If if you win football, then you can win life. And so then, yeah, I think that's how all the math works. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 128th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by Bipcot No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So we are back uh, after taking uh, a week off last week. Uh, I was just way too damn busy. Uh, <laughs> I am Jeremy. Me too. I, yeah. I, you know, as I mentioned a couple episodes ago, you know, life keeps getting in the way for uh, all three of us because uh, we've all had drastic, drastic changes yes. to our. Uh, yes, it's bullshit. The way the way we live our lives in the past year or so, things things have shifted. But we're back again. Radical uh, shifts. Yes, uh, I am Jeremy. Joined as back always by radical logic. By by always by as always by Dave and Andre. What's up, guys? What's going on, man? It's good to be uh, good to be back on the air on this show again. I'm glad I uh, could have some time to prepare before this show and not like run in, turn everything on, and be like. Okay, I got here five minutes before the show, so it was nice. So like me, but it, instead of five minutes before, I was ten minutes late, right? Is that what yeah. we're getting at? Okay. Yes, but even at ten, sure. even at ten minutes late, you're still more organized than Dave usually is. You know, Dave's been when when Dave shows up five minutes late, there's almost always a, or five minutes beforehand, there's always always a problem with his his setup, um, and a lot of times even when he shows up early, we still end up going late because he has problems. <laughs> So Look, all I'm saying is I don't have to take a bathroom break. So we are good. You're still ahead I of the am, curve. I am solid. You shouldn't curse yourself like that. Never say something like that is at the very beginning of a recording. <laughs> you're, 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 do, you're dooming yourself to, to get triggered at some point thinking about <laughs> running water or, you know, like a faucet getting left on or something like that. Uh, anyway, oh. so. Well, I promise even if my house catches fire, I am in it to the end. That's I will the, not worry about the fire until the show is over. That's a bold claim. I mean, I'm it's like that, I'm, it's like that gif. I'm, it's uh, bold. Everything is it's fine. True. Actually, it's everything fine. is fine. <laughs> if I if if I move if I moved Murder Dog in here into this room with me, uh, I might be willing to do that since the kids aren't here. And, you know, the 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 insurance would probably be a, a much better payout than uh, than having to go through the pro- process of selling my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I might be the only things I'd one. say would be my law books. That's it, because I'm not spending another two hundred dollars on each of them. I don't blame you, and I still need them for a few more weeks. Just a few more weeks, and then I can, I can go to the. Oh yeah, it is. It's it's now November as we're recording this, and uh, yeah, the <sighs> semester's wh- whipping right by for you, huh? Yeah, it's coming up on final season, and it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not prepared. The finals suck. 
Well, is, isn't this isn't this where you get the beginning of your like, or or maybe next week where you get that beginning of that two or three week stretch? You said you get where it's just all you get to do is study this stuff over and over and over again. Yes, I have this. I have next week and then the week after, and then after that, I have uh, two two and a half weeks of just study time, which I plan to maximize my use of as much as is humanly possible because I'm going to need it. Well, good 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 luck. Like to bread you, sir. or what? <laughs> Make no mistake, kids. Law school, even if you are smart, is not fucking easy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. And uh, I normally don't like to tout uh, shows ahead in case something ends up going wrong. But uh, what the heck? Uh, hopefully, we'll get to talk about that more next week when we have uh, Randy England, the former attorney for the fiends <laughs> who has since retired uh but he's scheduled to come on i am super excited about that next by the week way. and uh i think we're going to talk a little more of the the law aspect and i hope you know i'm sure you'll want to pick his brain about some things but anyway uh speaking of speaking of legal you know speaking of the law and stuff like that you know during during our time I off the uh, during the time our time off i i had my most oh, recent yeah, court oh. date which, as I was trying to recall earlier that day, and also later that night on, the, I think it was that night or the next night that I was on the Fiends, uh, I was trying to recall, and like I really lost track now how many appearance court appearances there were. I think this was number six or seven. I don't remember anymore. But uh, once again, even with my new attorney in tow, the, the thing has the, it was adjourned or continued or whatever the actual technical term for it is. I don't even know for an, another month, essentially, because uh, now it's the, at the end of this month, November, where I have to go back again. And my new attorney now has to go speak to the supervisor of the DA's office, just like my previous attorney already did and got the runaround for months which is what caused all the adjournments and, and or continuances in the first place <laughs> so sweet i sounds not, like a well-oiled machine oh yeah i'm not you know because a, cu- a couple of people have obviously made the you know s- s- quick and speedy trial jokes in uh, you know when, when talking about this with me and uh, yeah I've, I've said a couple times yeah that only happens in the movies because this does seem to be the more people i talk to this just seems to be the mo of you know is especially the this particular DA's office, but a lot of DA, DA's offices in general, you know, they they offer you these plea deals because that's really what they they're after. They just want to get as many convictions, essentially. You know, they just want to plea people out and not have to deal with the rest of it. And uh, if if you're gonna yeah. fight that in any way, because it gums the system up. Oh yeah, yeah, and oh, like if everyone fought their tickets, they would it, they wouldn't ride as many. Well, that's yeah, that's that's a point I've made, um, you know, multiple times recently, and other I've seen other people do it too. It's you know, and it's true. If more people did what I'm doing, then it, the system would be uh, would be falling apart a lot a lot faster, in my opinion. And obviously, you know, as I as I as I also mentioned the other night, I think on the on the air that. You know, I understand that there aren't, uh, you know, people aren't in my uh, necessarily in my position because, you know, with my current situation, I'm obviously pretty broke and uh, sc- uh, scrambling to uh, to get the heck out of here with uh, the just, you know, with just the money from selling my house, essentially, and uh, just getting the heck out of town. But, uh, you know, I was lucky that I have uh, people that were willing to. Yeah, s- New- you don't want to be in New York, man. It's well, no, I of course, imagine, like. I don't, but I'm, you know, how do you even begin to peel back the layers to fix that? Like, ha- like, well, I don't know how you fix New York. You, you know can't what I'm like, even if it, you privatized <laughs> it, you'd have to. Well, apparently you know, I, I was not aware of this, but apparently New York is one of those states that took on that whole, you know, constitutional convention thing pretty hard because I, 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 re- I realized that as I was out uh, walking uh, dogs last week for my friend who was out of town i was cover i was covering her route uh, out in the next county and i kept seeing all these signs for voting no on the constitutional convention and i was so confused because i hadn't heard anything about this but yeah apparently uh, some people are really trying to change things here in new york but that's that's a that's a, a a pipe dream I gave up on years ago. That w- that was my position for a long time. Once I you know once I decided that I was an anarchist, and said that you know I I, I wasn't going to vote necessarily, but I would do other things, whatever I could, to try to help make things better. And the reason I stayed here was specifically because well, if you can pull things off here, it's kind of proof that you can do it anywhere else. 
but I quickly got yeah. became disillusioned from that because I, it was like, okay, yeah, it's just not possible. Things are so horrible. <laughs> there's no, there's no walking back like any of this at this point. You know, I think I just saw a story recently where, where somebody, a, a recent story where somebody's still getting screwed by the stupid safe act which was the uh, gun control legislation that Prince Andrew had to come out with right after Sandy Hook. He had to be the first, like he had to re- he had to react quicker than Connecticut did, which is where the incident took place. He had, he had to be on, he had to be so fast. They had the midnight session where the thing was literally drawn up, uh, voted on and signed by him in a matter of hours, all like it ended up finishing around like one, two o'clock in the morning. But so they're they're just pushing you further down this this line of horse crap. Yeah, it's just you know again it 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 the way it looks on paper is like basically my side is asking for the adjournment here, but it's because they put them you know they put you in a position where they deflect and deflect and 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 avoid you because that's what they did to my last lawyer, which I don't think that I I really don't think they're going to be able to do with this lawyer. Well, well uh, they know it cost you a lot to keep that lawyer. Well, and they, that, well, every time they, you defer they, is a chance that lawyer is, you can't pay that lawyer. Well, they, they assume that, but luckily both lawyers that I've, I've had, uh, have worked on a flat, uh, flat fee and they, mm-hmm. you know, they don't work hourly. And, uh, the first guy I just paid a, a flat fee up front, which that's what I was getting to before. You know, luckily I've had people that have been willing to uh, help me here and support me because the first round of the, with the first lawyer got paid for with the uh, donations that, People like our friend Merrick Landingham uh, from uh, from Radical Logic, which you mentioned earlier, uh, helped out and got all you know. Even though they kept shutting the GoFundMe's and stuff down because it was for you know they found out it was for legal fees. Once they got the ones that stayed up and running, you know, people uh, enough money was collected, luckily, to pay off the first guy and pay my ex back for the money that she used the the, the money that she used of her own to bail me out. And this time around, it was a matter of my dad, who's still as pissed off as I am <laughs> about the whole situation and keeps getting madder when he found out that there was an opportunity for a really good trial lawyer who was willing to take my case uh, on, a, on a severe discount, was willing to do that. He was like, all right, I'll cover you for now. So like, you know, obviously I'm gonna have to pay him back at some point, but at the very least I'm covered for now, which is nice because yeah, having to deal with the, you know, if it was an hourly thing, Having to deal with that, oh god, I I wouldn't be, I'd I'd go insane. But yeah. like, like I said, luckily both of these people, both of these people who uh, who my one cousin, uh, who's one of the few people in the family who's still talking to me, hooked me up with. Uh, both were willing to work on, you know, they both understood my situation, or were both were, were willing to work on just like, all right, this is what I want, just give it to me, you know, either up front or half now, half later, whatever, and that's it. <laughs> no matter no matter what, how much stuff we do, uh, that's what it's going to be which is a kind of mm. service I like. So, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's deferred again for another month. And, uh, uh, hopefully by then they'll have either offered a better deal or, uh, I'll finally know when I'm going to trial, which at that point it'll definitely won't be until the new year because, you know, they take, I think half or most of the month of December off, uh, you know, for holidays. So, there's no way it'll be scheduled in the first one or two weeks of, of December. So I'm stuck. Uh, I mean, I, 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 can, bunch of- I can leave the state, but I really don't want to come back here uh, once I do. And uh, I, I think, as I mentioned a, a couple of shows ago, you know, my, uh, my grandmother recently died and she was the one reason I kept saying that if I did leave, she was to be the one reason I'd, ha- I'd, I'd want to come back. You know, if, you know, things got worse with her and I had to see her or come for her services, which obviously ended up happening a lot sooner than anybody thought. So now I don't even, I don't even have that anymore. <laughs> so I really don't want to have to come back this way for any reason. Once I, once yeah, I, I don't blame you, buddy. I don't, once I, I pick don't, up I, if move. I was in your position, I uh, would not yeah. want to be anywhere near it. You know, I would escape from New York. Kurt Russell style, one hundred. Call me snake. Well, I, I've I've spent like almost uh, you know almost two thirds of my life you know in this state, you know, because I've been here for I think twenty six of my forty years, so you know it's like I, I it's enough. <laughs> I've dealt with it. I've dealt with it when I was younger. I dealt with it when I was a teenager, and, and since I've been an yeah, adult, yeah, that's not good for your. You don't want to raise your kids in that city air. Like, 
This well, again, it's out. it's it's not again, Dave. It's not that close to the city. Still light. The air out here. The, still in the northeast, man. The air is horrible up there. No, the air the air, air here is actually pretty good, and it's it's nice because we're out we're close to the water, so everything gets blown. You know, it's uh we don't have, we don't deal with a lot of uh, the stuff. So you're downwind we're, from New Jersey or upwind. <laughs> No, we're yeah, we're 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 yeah, downwind or even with New Jersey, so most of it doesn't blow in our direction at all. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a plus. It's quite nice. Not much of a plus, but it's 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 nice. The little Could things. Be worse. The little things, man. It's the little things. <laughs> you know, when, I got that going for me, you, which is nice. When you're in a, in an in virtu- a, a virtually <laughs> impossible situation, uh, you know, it is those little things that help you from going completely insane, completely insane. So. So anyway, yeah. So that's the update. That's hilarious. Won't uh, won't know anything more, most likely, until the end of this month, and uh, we'll take it from there. But in the meantime, so, I'm still trying to sell the darn house. Uh, I have a guy I have to reach out to him again, who actually, you know, sent me a letter and everything that he wants to. He's making a serious offer already. You know, just contingent mm-hmm. on the uh, inspection and stuff like that. Uh, is it serious or is it like super serious? He did not put. He did not imply super seriousness in the letter, um, but he did. He did title the email. This is a serious offer, um, and I do do think he mentioned such <laughs> in, in the actual letter okay. itself. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm hoping you know it's it's a little less than the, a little less than I wanted, but it's it's more than enough to get me out of here if everything works on the timeline that I'm. Uh, trying to make it work out on where I'll, I'll have to go in debt just enough that I can pay it off with the money I make on the house and, uh, and also still pay off my car and walk away with enough money to get me to the next state. <laughs> well, not the next state, you know, the next place I'm going to live rather. I was fixing to say, it's going to be a long walk. If your only goal is to get to the next state, it might take you a little while. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go that. I, I want to go a little further than that. And uh, luckily, I won't have to walk. I'm not selling my car. I'm just paying it off. <laughs> so that's what's up with me. What about you guys, Andre? You're miserable with school, right? We covered that. Dave, how's the farm going? Uh just farming up, farming up, farming up, farming up. That's all we do, man. It's 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 blowing up. We. Yeah, I, I I didn't think it was going to be this successful starting out. I, I, I thought it was going to be a little bit harder than it is. I highly encourage everyone that hears my voice to look into starting any way you can to grow vegetables on any kind of land you have. And Even if you uh, don't have land, or urban farming is a thing, and people are mighty yeah, successful at it. you can farm your neighbor's yards. Uh, there's companies that don't own a, a – they do not own one – uh acre of land all they own is like a shack somewhere in the middle of the city that's got a bunch of walk-in coolers and all they do is farm all of the all of the yards around there for free they just ask them hey we'll farm your yard out you get 30 percent of the produce we keep the rest that's all we ask for and like people are like that's sure, all, yeah that's and all we ask for but yeah that's a sweet deal i would i would probably if i was living in one of those situations i would probably take yeah all you that. have to do is sign like a waiver for them to be on your properties at these times and these days and it's like pretty scientific like you can come there and talk to him and stuff but like that's that's kind of like i mean you need like what five to ten un, un, unemployed people in like two or three hours on youtube learning how to plant gardens and turn turn drive uh you know gardens <laughs> like i mean come on like anybody could do this and be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year anywhere well, across the country anywhere they live really not, because not, people not, have not, to eat not well people do have to eat but not anybody can do it i mean there there is still the well, thing uh, that, if you live in a wheelchair or you no dave it's you still quadriplegic like, i guess you're, I gotcha. you, no, you're, you're, I think you're, I think you're over. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big, big proponent of it myself. Obviously that's, that's part of my goal in getting out well, of here. That's just one is, business, is to, you know, like that's just one little excursion you could go on and set up. Well, I, yeah, but there, there is such a thing as, you know, be what, which market you're in. And if you were, if you were one of the first to market in your area and, and, and you're, and you're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're doing that well already, there's a chance that people weren't providing the products that you, that you're bringing. So. Here, here's the also the the, also there's uh, the time investment. I mean, for example, yes, I could theoretically do it, but I don't have the time necessary to devote to the project. I wouldn't focus too hard on the the the, uh, the business or what it is doing. It's more of the idea of starting businesses. This is what oh, we you're talking about yeah, on. entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah, no, no, I get it. You guys were yeah, totally we're, we're looking at a tree and not the forest here. No, no, no. Well, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I 
from what you were saying, it I, sounded like you were talking about specifically the farming thing. Which oh, no, I, that's I, just I agree. One thing, anybody, like, anybody could do it. But, uh, you know, depending on your circumstances, yeah. Yeah. But, well, yeah, no, well, I had all these apprehensions general, about, about going in business for myself, mm -hmm. essentially. And they well, kind yeah, of. Because it's the riskiest uh, venture you mountains. can get into. There's no fallback. Uh, they were molehills. They really were. So they weren't mountains at all. So, so far, everything's been good. You know, my state's a little different than everyone else's. Of course, I, I mean, I know it's that. better. It's a lot better. <laughs> it's the best. It's I, the I best know. state. <laughs> I don't know about they all that. They are broke. We're better than Mississippi. So the best That's, state is uh, one that can't okay, fund itself. So I guess you're right. Again, well, it's in all, that case, uh, then the best state is Mississippi. It's always it's, <laughs> a, it's always about perspective, Andre. I mean, again, from where I'm sitting, pretty much 48 of the other states are better. Um, actually, no. Maybe, <laughs> I like that you said 48 because I know you're including California. Yeah, no, and, and actually, terrible. And actually, I was going to I was going to amend that because I was going to say possibly, actually, even um, despite despite the uh, scenery uh, and make it 47 because Hawaii. Actually, I keep forgetting this, and I got reminded in a couple of different podcasts that I was recent, I was listening to recently. A lot of their laws, especially like their gun laws and stuff, their gun laws are actually worse than <laughs> than California's and New York's. Oh yeah, Hawaii. Um, Hawaii is not that. That's not where you go where you want to get easy living. That's not a well place exactly. That you can really so so yeah, well, well. unless you uh, can get like uh, a lot of land Those and sweet and, sweet and, government and subsidies. Yeah, and farm. Yeah, they, like if you know how to, if you're like a, a really, 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 really good farmer, you can go there and basically live like a king. Well, yeah, yeah, like, and the soil is exceptionally good for farming in a lot of places there, due to the uh, volcanic soil. This is true. Yeah, it's definitely so. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe forty-seven other places <laughs> are better than where I. I had, okay, I, mean, I had actually thing is. But it, but again, oh, as I pointed out multiple times before, uh, California and Hawaii do have the wet have the weather. Um, over New York, yeah, that's what I was. So they're still bad. So they're so it's still when you said, uh, <laughs> yeah, when you said uh, if you can make it work in New York, you can make it anywhere. Um, I mean, this is true, and California is on par with with New York for being a, a terrible place to live in terms of the government. But at least the weather's nice there. Exactly. You know, at least you have nice weather in California. I can't say that about New York. Yeah, I mean, all of nice. you're not dying and from you, a and New York is up with New Jersey, so. Only parts of it, you know, the, the city, I mean, the city has enough, its own, the city, enough of New York. The city has its own smell that overpowers New Jersey anyway, um, when you're actually in it. So, uh, <laughs> and again, out here on the island where I am, the smell actually isn't, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, we get the smell of the, off, off the water, which is relatively clean around here. So, you know, it's not too bad. Still don't want to be not for Alabama's best. Yeah. Our college football proves this. <laughs> Well, if that that's the fact. metric, then yeah, I'm, I'm, that is a hundred percent fact. That is a thousand percent true. I did it's hear a that priori once. true. Let me put it that way. If if you win football, then you can win life, and so then yeah, I think that's how all the math works. Sure, sounds good. <laughs> Alabama, great state or the greatest state? So, have you guys had a chance to read over Trump's uh, tax re thing or whatever? No, I have not. I have not. I have not. I, I I did see something about he's taking away the uh, mortgage tax credit. Is that correct? I don't. I I I was hoping you guys would have something to say about it. I only kind of got the here. Quick I'm, I'm gonna take a look. I saw somebody post something about that, and then uh, one of the guys from the Libertarian Party was talking about how, um, you know, he thinks that's a stupid thing to get you know, to to lower taxes while giving some kind of tax credit. I don't know. Is that whole conversation about like, oh, well, we should lower tax across the board and any tax, any any lowering of tax in one area is not good. It has to be across the board. Otherwise, it's it's always bad. Something like that. I don't it know. distorts the market, which I mean, uh, to be fair, that is that is true. It does distort the market. I was gonna say still do, less does, taxes. Yeah, but so. I was going to say, doesn't, doesn't just about every government intervention distort the market? So like, yeah, it's, it's exactly yeah, well, when exactly. the state gets so, inside the market. That means they're trying to regulate it or control it or price fix it or something. It's because well, they yeah, want to so, pick the winner and the loser in it. So yeah, I, I haven't looked at it, but again, I, I don't I mean, I, I, I'm sure some of this stuff will at some point affect me, but I don't you know, I, I honestly I have not been paying attention to what actually goes on uh, in 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 the in the political realm outside of the stuff that's so big i guess that makes that gets blasted across twitter and facebook constantly that i can't miss it <laughs> you know 
Okay, so here's what I'm reading about it. So uh, basically, it would cut income tax rates uh, across the board. It would lower the top rate to 35%, uh, doubles the standard deduction, but eliminates personal exemptions. And then it would also reduce the corporate tax rate from 35% to 20%. Which is huge. Fifteen percent tax rate drop is insane. Like <laughs> fuck yeah, it is. Well, yeah. When's, the, <laughs> when's the last like time a five percent drop is nuts for the market? Well, so like a fifteen percent is going to bring the yeah, but economy uh, on top of that, when's the last time the corporate rates were that low? I don't even remember. It's um twenty percent that seems low for 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 quite a while at least. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I mean that <laughs> what it what is is there is there like a a projection on what they they claim this is actually how this is benefiting people or are they just saying oh we're just going to cut this and this and everybody's going to be better off and kind of hocus pocus with language uh well let's i'm i'm continuing to go down the list so it also eliminates itemized deductions except for those on charitable contributions mortgage interest uh property taxes and retirement savings the mortgage deduction is only for new mortgages of five hundred thousand dollars or less. So, like million dollar homes are not uh, don't qualify for the mortgage interest uh, uh, deduction. Mm -hmm. uh, it also means no deductions for medical expenses. Uh, eliminates the deduction for state and local taxes. So that would definitely hurt people in states like California and New York, where taxes are stupid high. Yes, but. Uh, where, you know, where where I get where I regularly get told that oh you only pay seven thousand dollars, like are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> That's considered low. Jesus. It's considered low for Long Island, uh, sadly. Uh, it oh says gosh. the plan does allow taxpayers to deduct state property tax deductions up to ten thousand dollars. So apparently, like property tax that you pay to the state, you can deduct, but you can't deduct state and local taxes outside oh. of the property tax. Oh well, hmm. that's that's well, yeah, that's, that's a, usually that's the biggest one I get I get hit with. Anyway, yeah, I, I was so. fixing to say that's generally the biggest one anyway. So I, that seems like kind of a little bit of a minor thing unless you live somewhere where they just have a lot of high taxes because the property tax thing is the makes up the bulk of it anyway. But in states like California and New York and you know probably Hawaii, uh, state and local taxes are yeah, exorbit say, exorbitantly it, high anyway. Yeah, for everything else. Yeah, high 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 sales tax. I think ours is eight and a half. Something like that. Maybe eight and three quarters at this point. I don't even know. Okay. And it also says uh, it limit, it'll eliminate personal exemptions. So you know how right now you can subtract like uh, a few thousand dollars for each child you have. Um, it would eliminate that. So the Wait child tax credit would go away. Is it, is it, oh, wow. So the, no more dependents. So the exemption currently allows taxpayers to subtract $4,050 from income for each person claimed on the tax return. So families with many children would pay higher taxes under this despite doubling the standard deduction. Awesome. So that's what they would affect. They would affect my family. Back to uh, the house plan also doubles the estate tax exemption from five and a half million to 11 million. So estate taxes are down now. Or the exemption is larger, so you can claim more. Well, estate taxes, I think, are just insane to begin with. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, all so taxes. I mean, on the bright side, at least those are so doubles now. So this is probably now, so. not going to be what ends up passing, right? More likely right. than uh, no, I would hope not. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I again, I don't pay that much. This attention. This isn't what Trump promised at all. But I do listen to. Uh, it also eliminates the alternative minimum tax. So, I guess that helps those who make enough to be subject to it. So I, I I'm not really too familiar with the alternative minimum tax. I know I know that it exists, but I don't know too much about it. But uh, I don't even apparently, know that that or they're going to do it in chunks. All out. They're going to they're yeah. going to do it in chunks. They're going to put his uh, plans in. Two, 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 two. Well, again, business I, taxes. The Tax Act would lower the maximum corporate tax rate from thirty five to twenty percent. House plan lowers the maximum tax rate for small businesses to twenty five percent. That includes literally every kind. As a result, uh, eighty-five percent of this tax cut benefits the top one percent of earners because it also applies to real estate companies, hedge funds, and private equity funds. So, of course, there's going to be a huge, a huge, huge kvetching, huge kvetching, kvetching do, over that. I do love that it. word. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it great? It is a great word. I mean, I don't, I don't care that that that, that award was given to me as a derisive thing. I, I, I say I took, I earned it with pride, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it also will allow all businesses to expense the cost of depreciable assets. So instead of writing off depreciable assets, you can claim them as a business expense now. 
Uh, C corporations would lose the ability to deduct interest expense. So it'll make it a little bit more expensive to borrow money because you can't deduct the interest from your taxes. It also advocates a territorial tax system. It would not tax income that businesses earn in other countries, but it does impose a 10% tax on high-profit foreign subsidiaries. It allows a one-time tax on profit stockpiles, whether earned domestically or overseas. The tax is 12% on cash, 5% on liquid asset. Uh, oh, that's right, a right. worse that- deal than the 10% tax in Trump's 5 part tax plan okay so yeah this that is, might collapse uh, the the country like most people don't know this but there's trillions of dollars offshore and trump's wanting to bring them in and tax tax them because the tax rate is so high that they keep all of that money offshores and these are u.s dollars so the minute they bring this like i think it's 2.3 trillion dollars into the market here just just think about if you were in a swimming pool that you know was full uh, and then someone jump dropped like two more swimming pools worth of water in there while everyone was swimming. That would kind of suck. Everybody would drown. Everybody yes. Would basically, that's basically what they're <laughs> going to try to do. Yes. That's Good. Yes. Good. Embrace, embr- embrace the void, everybody. Because uh, <laughs> it's coming. You know when you're like staring at the abyss and the abyss stares back so you wave? But the abyss doesn't wave back because it wasn't actually staring back at you at all. It was looking at the guy behind you. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a guy behind you, you know? So what's happening here? Everybody's behind you. But is you. there a guy behind you? Is there a you? I think so. Oh, I've no seen No one can know. It's impossible to tell. I've seen a bunch of you. Reality is subjective. That's a little too much information. Reality is a spook. I don't. I don't want to. I don't really want to know what you guys were up to down there in Florida. But anyway, uh, <laughs> reality is a spook. See, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> um, sometimes I think it is. Um, that's, it's all spook. I mean, technically, the word reality is. Go on. Go on, Jeremy. Go on, go on, Jeremy. Go on, Jeremy. No, the I, the the problem with like, you know, I I I said I wasn't really joking, but I said it jokingly. You know, my my idea for tax reform, I think I said earlier, is just you know get rid of the IRS. There you go. That's my <laughs> that's my solution. Um, but I, I don't, you know, I I start like even even with some of the things that you were talking about that are like lessening the burden, I guess, and making it you know getting you to keep a little bit more of your money. Like even with that positive stuff, my my eyes essentially glazed over after <laughs> after you started rattling off more than a few of them because like I, already I was just like. Yeah, this is just too complicated already. The fact that they have to go through and like itemize all these things, whether whether they're good, bad, or or indifferent, you know, to me is just that that's like it still keeps it's government employed to do a stupid job. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's just like, it's really? go- exactly it's just government in a nutshell, you know, where it's uh, things are uh, done horribly, inefficiently, on purpose, <laughs> in order to create in order to create work and to create and just generate revenue and make life as bearable but as um you know demoralizing as possible for the citizenry <laughs> uh so i i like you know like that's why i, I said I, I don't follow much of what goes on in the political realm but especially stuff like this it's like you know does it really affect does it really affect me one way or the other i mean they're going to try to get their money from me one way or the other they they always have <laughs> which is why i've i've tried to go as as agorist as possible over the past few years and i'm going to continue to do so once i once i get the heck out of here and uh you know have to uh pay off a, a few more of uh, you know like i said pay off some some of the stuff that i've racked up on credit and and uh hopefully get an essentially a, a fresh start with a, uh, you know, a little money in the bank and actually hopefully a, a lot more money depending on how things go with the crypto markets. Cause that was the other thing I think uh, we were going to touch on tonight that I think Bitcoin might go to nine K, bud. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember we were talking about uh 10 K in 2018. We might reach 10 K by the end of 2017. Well, yeah, we've, we've talked about it a bunch the past a couple of shows, I think, but uh, you know, it keeps reaching new heights. So it's really hard not to talk about it. <laughs> and the fact that it's uh, you know, I think seven, you know, 7,300, 7,400, depending on the, uh, the exchange you look at is it's topped out on. So at so far, and is still hovering around the seven thousand mark. And, yeah, I'm uh, on Bittrex right now, and it's at sixty nine seventy seven. So it's it's holding steady at seven k. Yeah, and uh, we're still what t- a little less than two weeks, maybe two weeks, I guess, out from the next fork, right? The Segwit two. Uh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. 
I still haven't collected my other whatever. <laughs> I wish Bitcoin. I had had Bitcoin in the bank when uh, cash came out because that would have been nice to get like I a boost for, you know, essentially free money. I still, yeah, I don't know what it is right now. I, I saw that it jumped back up to like over four fifty again the other day. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I still haven't collected. Last I looked at it, I, I, I missed the train uh, on getting mine. I guess I thought you just uh, you had those. In, you can in, no, you can still you can still get it, Dave. I still I haven't gotten mine yet either. I can still I, I I just haven't gotten around to it because I had so many issues with the damn Jack's wallet, you know, like them locking <laughs> me out of my Ethereum, which I still can't access uh, until I get. I, I'm basically just gonna have to go, bite the bullet and get a, a better a newer phone because it's whatever whatever wallet you were on. If they uh, if they uh, had the fork, if they supported the fork. They created a secondary wallet, or they created a secondary Bitcoin Cash wallet for you. So, well, yeah, Jax didn't. Jax hasn't yet. <laughs> um, but uh, fucking Jax, man. That, that's yeah. But as long as Jack, yeah, but I do, I do own the private keys for the for those wallets. So the whole the whole thing with that was as long as you, that, that was the whole point. As long as you had your, no matter where your Bitcoin was at the time of the of the fork for the Bitcoin Cash, as long as you had the private keys, you could access it at a later uh, at a later point. You know where all you have to do is yeah. uh, sweep your essentially sweep your wallet into another one where it'll just where it'll just collect into a Bitcoin Cash wallet that's um, compatible and it'll end up it'll get transferred over there. Uh, I just I still haven't done it yet because I've been dealing with the crap with Jax and the Ethereum screw up and. Uh, also not wanting to do anything because there was the fork a couple of weeks ago, I guess, with the Bitcoin gold one that hasn't been going very well from what I've seen and heard. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's not a lot of uh, faith in that one, at least. I mean, Bitcoin Cash, again, there, it spiked when it first came out and uh, and then, you know, st it dropped and, and, and kind of stayed between, I think, like 250 and 350 for quite a while. I guess I think I think the SegWit, I think the SegWit one is going to have a much, much uh, deeper impact. As far as the two forks that are created, because I know there was a lot of contention about uh, Stegwit and the increase of con like the increased complexity of transactions and signing transactions and how it's going to create a, a second layer on top of the blockchain that would handle all of the transaction confirmation and signing, which I mean, I, I, I read it. I'm not, you know, the most tech savvy guy in the world. I'm sure you can tell this by now i've been on the show long enough that everybody listening <laughs> can figure out i'm not that tech savvy but uh based on what i was reading it created like a whole it created uh, an unnecessary security vulnerability because all of the signing now lo now no longer takes place on the blockchain in order to save space on the blockchain because i mean bitcoin uh -huh. only has a, a limited amount of space per block so to op free that up and allow for more transactions supposedly the idea was you could have this sub layer where all of the signing of the transactions takes place, but it's not confirmed on the blockchain anymore. That takes place before the confirmation of the blockchain. So once that takes place, then it's written in the blockchain and it basically just has a flag that says has been confirmed. And the, that entire process is no longer recorded. <clears throat> so I don't know what to make. I mean, just as a, a relative layman looking at that, I think that's may not be the best way to go. And uh, it seems like there's a, a fair amount of sentiment against that. So I think that the fork is going to have much more support for it than like cash or especially gold. Hmm. Well, it's the biggest thing that Bitcoin's going to have to be challenged. Like going forward with Bitcoin is going to be integrating it further and further and further into payment systems and everything like that basically just getting people's feet in the water because once they get everyone i've given 10 20 bucks of this stuff they start buying it everyone once they start seeing that that you know holy crap you gave me 20 of it and now it says it's worth 50 what's up it's like hey man if you would have put a thousand dollars in it imagine how much you would have people yeah, exactly. go crazy over it so it's once they see it it's undeniable and actually, and something I wanted to mention because it was on a uh, it was on a post. Some it was somebody's response talking about how, uh, well, you know, it's still a bubble because there's really no use for Bitcoin. Nobody's adopted it. You can't use it to buy anything. But think of this: just about every single exchange now. There's plenty of exchanges where you can use different currency. So like, there's plenty of exchanges that'll take Ethereum now, and many that take Litecoin as well, and a couple of different alts. Yeah. But every single one of them does and will accept Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the universal medium of exchange for buying other altcoins. 
Yeah, this of is course. True. So regard, regardless of whatever other use case, grandpa Bitcoin. That's what I'm saying. Regardless of whatever other use case you want to make for Bitcoin, as of right now, it is the standard for exchanges. It doesn't matter, guys. It well, doesn't matter what Bitcoin does next week, a year, a thousand years from now. All it did was open Pandora's box. All Satoshi Nakamoto did was open Pandora's box. Was paid box. 20 Bitcoin for a pizza? Well, look, <laughs> he, he opened a Pandora's box in the sense local communities up to complete like the whole world could be on one coin okay he's opened pandora's box that can't be closed it's impossible to stop now so everyone can have their own coin it was like i was saying on facebook today what happens when they make white coin black coin christian coin muslim coin whatever coin where an insular group can say we're only using this i would love for them to make mennonite coin i would buy (laughs) mennonite coin i would just for the novelty works. of it, I would buy a shitload of for it. For the irony, if they were ever to do that, for the if they ir- did that. For the I irony, would. I would like the I would like the luddite coin. That would uh, <laughs> that would be that, that would be my <laughs> preference. Like All proceeds of this coin goes to sh- smashing textile factories. <laughs> 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 The the, um, the entire website, the launch well, website, is just a, a is just a diatribe against cryptocurrency and technology in general, and how it's awful, <laughs> and nobody should ever get yeah, into it. Yeah, and, it, and it's a it's a photograph of somebody who who, who like wrote it in the dirt with a stick. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's that's what I've been thinking about a lot lately. Yeah, but is, well. I, well, what if a private community sets up and they only allow this currency, and you can tr- buy Bitcoin? and transfer this whenever you want to come into the place so like bitcoin has not only allowed us to have this like essentially crypto gold it's also opened pandora's box on localized coins well i was was fixing to say the reason the reason i brought it up was just because i've never seen anybody mention that in all of the discussions about whether this is a bubble this isn't sustainable or no it's going to the moon yada yada whatever and i mean the conversation about how this is the legacy dollar though I mean, and, and the the you know the the conversation about how this is the reason why it keeps going up is because the legacy banking system is failing, and they mm-hmm. can't put a stop on it. They can't control. They can't hide um, their inflation. Yeah, exactly. But because I haven't Bitcoin seen anybody inflationary. Right, but I haven't seen anybody mention specifically that the best use case for Bitcoin is buying other altcoins. It's the backbone of the cryptocurrency market. So yeah. that's the only reason I wanted to bring it up because oh, I good, just thought that was a novel. It's a very a good novel point. Thing. I have seen it. Yeah, it's a, no, it's a very good point because it's not. Again, I, I don't follow. I mean, I don't follow things that closely, but it's not one I've heard before. So it's, I think it's a really good point. But all, all I wanted to say also, I, I think the the fact that people make try to make that argument that even you know, like you're saying, even beyond even beyond having any other use, at least it has that one. I I, th- I I find the whole it has no use in the first place to be fallacious because that's just not true. Like there are people <laughs> who are using it to live right all now. All value is subjective, so it's there a, are there are people that that it's do a false it. False statement on its face. That 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 use it regularly for purchases. You know, as evidenced mm-hmm. by the uh, you know what happened when uh, when all those darknet sites got taken down. You know, the amount Dude, of people transaction that were rates is all you have to look at to prove what you're saying. They're not going down. Yeah. Why do you I'm think saying. they're having? They're the, only going why do you up. think they're having this hard fork in the first place? Is because they can't handle the transaction load. So clearly, Literally. this has been increased. Yeah, and it's yeah, exactly, and it's not just trading because there are there are not only are there companies you know like, like you know Overstock.com was the first big one, but other ones too. And I keep seeing more and more stuff recently that Amazon is still flirting with the idea of accepting Bitcoin, which if they because I think currently you can do something. It would be over. <laughs> you you can currently do something through the uh, world would be over through I think it's purse.io. You can currently do Jeff something. Jeff Bezos would get killed um, through uh, through <laughs> Amazon and and have a Bitcoin connection there. But they're you know they're looking to do it outright. I um, mean yeah, I think you're right. If 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 that happens, that is pretty much game over. <laughs> Beyond that, there's still the you know I, people who who people who make that argument are either like completely ignorant of it or purposely not not uh or leaving out of the equation like things like the uh you know the bitcoin debit cards which are out there people can get and you know you can literally buy bitcoin and store it on a paper wallet and go get a shift card yeah the shift and load it up with two hundred dollars in bitcoin or three hundred dollars in bitcoin and or whatever whatever amount you want you can load it up how whenever you want however much you want and when you swipe it 
they take that Bitcoin out of that account, spend a visa transaction, a credit visa transaction, and that's it. That's yep. it. That's the end of the story. I I really need to do this. I have been me. I have been thinking about doing this for a while, but I really want to do that and just start moving all of my, all of my wealth, all of the money that I get in, um, that I use day to day, and to pay for bills and stuff. I want to move that into a. Someone shift set up card. a service called BitPay or something like that, or Bit. Uh, there was a way you could set yeah, it up to where, when you get your yeah, check is, or whatever from your company, I think that's BitPay. Uh, yeah. Well, you're, uh, it, it'll cut like 10%, 15% out. Go ahead and buy the Bitcoin and send it to this address. So you can just have a certain amount of your paycheck already being cut like a tax going to Bitcoin. Oh, once I have a more regular paycheck again, that would be a wonderful idea for me. <laughs> well, you could but, do that yourself if you're self-employed. You could just sit there every time you're going to you know, pay yourself out of your company or oh, I, I know that. Uh, I'm, pay a dividend. Just go ahead and say, look, 20% of this is going to Bitcoin because it's the highest and fastest returning asset I've seen outside of, I mean, something really esoteric right now. Like at any point in time in the last six to three years, you could have dumped all of your money into Bitcoin. It would have been a great decision. There's would have never been a bad time to do pretty, it. Pretty much. Now, yeah. <laughs> it would have sucked to dump like all your money in when you got uh, like 1200 or whatever. Like I bought the majority of my Bitcoins when they were 900. So I didn't see any real money like or real return from anything until they got kind of about 1200. So it was it was a uh, and then they went to the moon. And then they're now yeah. they're it's it's nothing 000. but profit. <laughs> yeah. So like you know, we've all had our bitcoin stories where we could have bought some, but like I you know, people always yell at me when I say buy Bitcoin, it's not like I'm telling you to go get like a, a ten thousand dollar loan and do dump it into Bitcoin. What I'm trying to I tell you is, do that. it probably wouldn't be a bad idea, yeah. but it'd be hard to get an unsecured so, for ten grand. Uh, uh, unless yeah, you had a lot. Screw that. I was, I was, yeah, I was tempted to take a take a cash advance on my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> especially after after I learned I had yes. a, I, after I especially after I learned that I had a much larger credit limit on that thing that I ever thought that I did. Um, <laughs> I was like, I have how much credit? Yeah, left? it's like going and buying mm. silver. Like, <laughs> and Would, then being yeah, like, yeah, come get it. I buried all the silver. You that, come that, have everything else. That's funny. I actually I actually received a phone call today from some company trying to sell me either silver or gold. I can't remember what it was. Um, I, think I get a call silver. about <clears throat> every two months from the, the, either the sheriff's department or the like police officers association wanting money, and I'm like, "Oh, that's something different." Yeah, the 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 PAL what? calls me or the or the or the police. Uh, the no, chiefs I'm just I just I hate it. Like, I'm like, why are you calling me? Yeah, I just hang up. I I used to want, I used to try to like um, you know drop knowledge on them and, and or or and or troll them a little bit, but I just given up on that. Um, but no, well, I was this just, is just a call screener, or I mean, somebody sitting in a call. It's not. I know some cop sitting there. I, exactly. It was kind of yeah. That was kind of why you know <laughs> one of the reasons I gave. I up answer on all it. telemarketing call uh, telemarketing calls by uh, acting as though I'm in the middle of giving them a lecture about uh, uh, universal objective rights and uh, how taxation is theft and so on and so forth. <laughs> They're all asked them a, a rhetorical question, a Socratic question. <laughs> A rhetorical so Socratic question. Those are the best. Yes, they are. They are. They're fantastic. <laughs> and they're a great way to get people to hang up on you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I have to, when, well, when like, telemarketer... Oh. Oh, I was just Go gonna ahead. say this. This guy, you know, again, I he wasn't he wasn't from the government. He wasn't looking for the po police for money. He was just you know trying to sell me gold or silver um, at really reduced prices, obviously. And uh, it was just funny because I, I just I, I had just enough time to be like, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, all my money's tied up in cryptos right now. And he's like, oh really? But we're doing this and this and this. I'm like, yeah, Bitcoin just hit seven thousand. You should look into it. Have a great day. Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah, that's probably what he's doing. Probably well, like shit. I have all know, this gold, can, and I'm not really getting much of a return. Fuck. Because well, for me, so silver was the only thing I ever had invested in before. Well, to you know, to whatever extent be, uh, before uh, cryptos came around, I finally got into the crypto world. So you know, I'm I I I, I'm, I have some sympathy to listening to people who are offering me that, but I just any any money I do have right now, like I said, I was tempted to do it with the credit card for more Bitcoin, but. Uh, I, I think I, you know, I got the better of myself, and I'm just 
It's like so many so, people just hodling what I have and uh, hoping to ride this out as long as I can. <laughs> but here's the thing. The reality of Bitcoin is, is this is an, it's a direct affront to the Fed and the BIS and uh, everything. Okay. So what, what are they going to do when they have to fight or flight? They're, like, what are they going to do? They're going to crank the, you know, Fed coin will become a thing. Um, you know, I, I was talking about that the other. Well, I was talking about that. Get, the other, take the microchip. Well, no, we we talked about that the other night on the fiends. It was, uh, you know, the fact that well, I think it was Doug Casey actually came out recently and said he fully, uh, you know, in his opinion, just his, you know, look at the landscape and stuff. And you know, he's been pretty good on a lot of his predictions. Was that you know within five years he totally sees like a Fed coin being forced on uh, forced on Americans um, as like you know trade your dollars in for this. Uh, because they do see, you know, we've seen it before with the things like with uh, Jamie Dimon from, uh, uh, what's call it? Uh, not J.P. Morgan. I always want to say Chase, but it's J.P. Morgan's the is the parent company, right? So denouncing it, and then right away, you know, when the price drops, going up and buying a bunch of it, you know, they 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 know what's happening. You know, the CEO from Mastercard coming out and blasting it. You know, the most recent one. Mm -hmm. uh, blasting it the other day. Uh, week, well, they're week, trying whatever. to make the market move down, uh, the needle down, so they can drop drop as much money as they can into it. Well, yeah, because they realize the positions they have, but they're but the all they're moving is idiots or people that are trying to sell off real quick because they know there's going to be a sell off. A lot of people aren't dumb, you know. They have bots that watch the Bitcoin when it's when it, they say if it moves past this percentage, down sell off or whatever. You know, there's people that are millionaires now just off of running a simple algorithms. Oh no, I know, and but, I, I, that's the one thing we, 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 talk, we talk, always talk about. You know, people always kick themselves for. Oh, I could. The bought. minute they try to move that stuff in a real fruitful way, they're going to get. Oh. It's not going to be pretty. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's the one. They yeah, have to well, go live in like Thailand or some shit. You know? <laughs> well, depending on how much, yeah, you know, once 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 the once the political winds change enough, yeah, you could be totally screwed, and they'll just take everything from you. <laughs> You basically can't make a million dollars without every without a lot of people knowing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is this is true. Yeah, unfortunately, especially in cryptos because like everyone knows everybody. Like, well, if you don't, you know, we had a guy on a couple not episodes talk about back it. who was saying, you know, he's developed stuff that lets people pinpoint exactly where a Bitcoin transaction was made, like like within like a square meter. You know. Oh yeah, so, I forget what was his name. I forget his name. He was a crypto. I figured his name as well, sorts. but I mean that that's the kind of stuff we need for a more freer society, for a more op I wouldn't say open society, but a more a more trust built society is when you know who you're dealing with, you know who they've screwed over, you well, know who the they haven't screwed it's, over. It's a reputation based society. We yes, a reputation exactly. economy, man. I can't wait for that, and it's starting to yeah, happen. There you go, the reputation economy. Thank you. Exactly. You can you can basically boycott cultures away through this openness. You know what I'm saying? You can just be like, look, I already know what you're about. I'm not doing business with you. I can see every transaction you've ever made. You know what I'm saying? So like people are going to be able to morally draw lines way harder the more, you know, reputation gets to be a, a thing uh, uh, with technology based. You know, before we've always had we've always had a societies with reputation based, you know, merits and stuff, but we've never had one with like objectable fact and basically a 100% camera. Everyone's going to know how many heart times your heart beated last year. Like it it's very Beat. crazy what's what's <laughs> on the horizon. Well, also think of it this way, given how much social media and just interconnectedness, like like network connectivity, has been adopted by the masses. I mean, we're more interconnected now w via the internet than at any point in time in human mm -hmm. history. Like it, you can you can gain so much more information, and as a result, people have taken in a lot more information. Now, you can argue that it's made people a lot more polarized, and I would tend to agree. And people have a tendency to just look at whatever facts that kind of suit their perspective. But on the flip side of that. I think we're re we're getting to a point where the average consumer not only is interested to know with whom specifically they are dealing with, but mm -hmm. has the resources to figure that out and to do that information, do that research themselves. So not only not only do they want do, not only do they they want to be informed, but they have the tools to be informed, and it's a developing process. But that's going to lend itself 
to this sort of reputation economy that we're talking about with Bitcoin and with uh, uh, cryptocurrency well, adoption like- in, in general use. Because prior to this, everybody could say, oh, well, you know, it's like, uh, uh, what is it? Political economy, right? The willfully ignorant voter. And I think for, for a very long time, just because of the the sheer amount of effort you'd have to do in order to do that research and dig through that information, a lot of people were willfully ignorant consumers. Like, oh, yeah, well, I heard rumors, this and that, but whatever, you know, I'm still going to shop here. But now mm-hmm. more people are more interested and are more engaged in knowing where their stuff comes from and who it is they're buying from and who it is they're dealing with. And the technology is starting to catch up ha- now. And who has a solid can, can business plan is getting blackballed out of uh, an industry or whatever because of neoteny or not neoteny, but uh, nepotism. Nepotism. So, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's just and, it's you know, awesome I'm not because we're, nepotism, we're finally it's just at the like point now. It has now. to be an economical decision, you know. Yeah, but we're finally at the point now where like technology is making this a reality. Like, it, we technology is finally catching up with the desire to know who it is you're dealing with, which is a cornerstone of not, a reputation economy. The state fears that the most because well, without of course them, they do because the state has a terrible guy, reputation. Hey, uh, let us figure this all out. You people are too dumb. We're the smart ones. Without that, what it's like, hey, all we have to do is read this ledger over here and see who's right and wrong. It's kind of what are you here for, buddy? You're other than to be a giant leech that we need to throw <laughs> for the ground. For better or worse, this mass adoption of social media that we've seen in the last 10 years has primed the general population for this kind of a change, this kind of a paradigm shift. And I am truly excited about I think about you're going to see society, and I've, I think I've said this maybe on this podcast, not sure. I think you're going to see societies popped up based on like intentionally segregating via culture do you get what i'm saying like people going we're all going to this area oh yeah cultural enclaves ethnic enclaves cultural enclaves like breakaway society level so i think that's going to be the the next step in humanity is seasteading breakaway society stuff like that well i mean because I, you I have sure this so. huge mass of population <laughs> that lives on the tit and they're basically the only the only reason they have to live is to I don't know. I have no reason what their purpose is. So to support themselves. What, <laughs> yeah. So By like you have these space. people that, that that there's other people that are like, hey, I don't want to involve myself with that at all. You know, like have a good time with that. Not for me. That's that's where we're headed. And you know, things like I want. I don't want to say Facebook, but like websites where people can segregate via ideologies and a common interest and stuff like that you can then build up Steven. communities that way yeah well, I, I mean <laughs> i had to do a plug i'm sorry <laughs> go on i i'd like to think that's the case i mean that's that's where i'd obvi- i'd like to you know kind of see that things head in that direction so i i don't know i mean i i don't know if i'm as confident as you are dave but you know i mean that's basically the type of thing that I want to get involved in myself, you know, creating essentially. You got to remove the sentiment community. of changing the whole world. That's that's the that's the crux. Oh yeah, I, I gave up on that long on ago. Focus on changing the whole world or all three hundred million people in the United States. No, oh no. Focus on changing yourself, your family, and your neighborhood. Go meet your neighbors. Ninety percent of people don't even know who their neighbors are. Yeah, Walk across the street, say hey. Well, it's who. Th- this is who I am. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, I, I plan on because doing that. Because people trust their neighbors. When I, when I move, I plan trust on... trust their neighbors over everybody. When, when I move, I plan on doing that and starting over with, you know, new neighbors because most of the neighbors around here, are, I mean, they, uh, they're not very friendly with me. Uh, most of them weren't very, weren't very friendly with me to begin with, um, but that's because I didn't come out and be friendly with everybody else like they were. I just didn't care <laughs> or I was too busy. <laughs> I think... I think people are going to self segregate digitally before they do it physically, and I think we've we've started we've seen that process have. begin. People, yeah, people well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have. That process has already started, and it's ongoing. The phrase is balkanize. We're going to yeah, see a that's, mass. That's what I was thinking like. Of. The internet is going to be. The internet has been a hyper catalyst for balkanization, like cultural balkanization. How about that? So. Humans are are etching towards Which, the, yeah, the but that precipice, could... the cliff, or whatever of where we're all starting to realize the state, this huge f- 
you know, yeah, democracy, but, all of this stuff is an utter complete failure. Well, uh, everyone's kind of seeing it at the same time. I don't see again. I don't necessarily know about that because I, when, when, you know, when you're, when you're Look talking about the political climates around the world. Yeah. But when too you're much information's out, man. Yeah. But when you're talking about stuff like that, like, you know, and, and this whole idea of this balkanization, that almost seems because there, there, there could be great. There's pretty good arguments to be made that I can think of just off the top of my head, and I'm sure there's even more for that either to be something that was either a designed by the state or b is a circumstance. This as the state, you know, just like so, say the gov- United States government, um, in I particular, think they just react, would be ta- well, it would be taking advantage of. Um, because of because of something that happened that's that started it in that direction, not necessarily that everybody is move is recognizing that because you know again I, I unfortunately I think that's a little too optimistic and it may just be from my particular vantage point because well I'm, you are I'm, a curmudgeon. So, I am I mean, a curmudgeon, <laughs> but I'm. But I, I was also just talking about what I see around me, and I'm not just talking about what I see around my, myself in here in New York, because I discount a lot of that, obviously, because it's very skewed, and I understand that off the bat. But I'm just talking about in general, you know, countrywide. Well, and, I, I think a lot I think more generally, people are awake I think, than you realize. Or, yeah, I was going to say, I think over realize. overall, I mean, regardless of who you talk to, even people that still believe strongly in a state. I think overall, um, the mood is that the path that we're on is not sustainable. Now, what form that argument takes, or you know, what particulars, will vary, you know, between each individual group that uh, is making this claim. But I think overall, just a, a large number of people, I would be willing to say that a majority of people now are looking at the state and being like, "Yeah, the, what we're doing now is 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 not working." And things have got to change. This is not sustainable, and this will crumble under its own weight. Well, once people even Dem- break I mean, out, I, of this- I would be one to say that even Democrats feel this way. I mean, that's not to say that I like well, them. Well, I, uh, I think I mean, their would- ideas are good. Their ideas are horrible, but uh, even they are not satisfied with your, the your state as exoteric. It exists. Your exoteric Democrat, yeah, I'll agree. Your your useful idiot Democrat, I'll agree. They realized like they were mad that Bernie got burned, and they're even going to be more mad because Donna Brazil uh, just came out and literally burned Hillary. The whole thing said Hillary rigged all of it. Done all like it. It's bad. So <laughs> it, well, you're right. Well. Even the Democrats want. Even the average Democrat is like. This cannot stay the same. I've, I've been saying, see, I, I was saying that go back to our shows from uh, almost a year ago, right after the election, when I started saying, this is the time to go after all these people because they're going to be feeling like this. And if they're not now, give them a year um, and come back and check on them and see how yeah, but pissed the, off they Yeah, are. but the problem with those people is they don't, they, they don't and will refuse to ever understand economics. They, they will absolutely refuse. Again, I, I can't, I, you know, I'm one of them. Oh, and also you can't really have a debate with someone Danilo that your private property rights end when their emotions begin. So it's like the first thing you have to do uh, is break someone of this emotional, your property doesn't matter when I'm in an enraged or uh, righteous state. I mean, it's, it's certainly state. possible. It's certainly possible. I'm not going to say it's impossible. I mean, fuck, man. I've tried. I have. I have tried. I have tried a lot. I really have. And I went through a, a very strong phase where I took your advice and I tried to reach out to people that were thinking this way. And I did have a lot of meaningful conversations. But at the end of the day, there was this just adamant refusal to accept and understand to, well, yeah, private property. Podkin said, and it's like, ah, oh, no, yeah, exactly, never mind, dude. exactly. Have a good it, one. What have it comes a great day. To. Keep reading that dude because he <laughs> nailed it in eighteen whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, they had the internet to consider back then. <laughs> it's all just horse shit. <laughs> because you know, like once once you reach that, once you reach to a particular author, that's where uh, uh, ethics that's and where philosophy it ends. just yeah. stops. That's where it ends. That's where it ends. We've reached the pinnacle. Anything that comes after it is uh, not worth mentioning. Ugh. And the same can be said for anybody settling on Hop. Like Hop's just like the next guy or the continuation of Rothbard, right? So like anybody, I, just well, going, I yeah, agree. Hop's I agree. Anybody, anybody who sits on Rothbard, anybody who sits on Rothbard without acknowledging Hop is Hoppa is guilty of the same thing. I mean, granted, Rothbard was absolutely in the heading in the right direction, but uh, if you lo- if you stop at Rothbard and you don't acknowledge Hoppa at all, you're doing yourself a disservice. 
And this is going to be true of the guy that comes after Hoppe. So, I mean... The Andre it's, Chiara, it's, it's a, you know? The, the Chiara. Say it again. Say it one more yes! time. I'm going to come up there and beat you. <laughs> I'm going bur- to burn down your crops. Chia pet? What? Uh, uh, I won't. Chiara, I won't I actually. I, I won't do that. I won't do that Chiara. because I respect Chiara. private property. I won't do that because I respect private I'm property. I'm bad at it, man. Yeah, I'm but you terrible. You violated terrible. your nap somehow so I with just that. Call him on, 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 I call okay. Andre is what I call him. <laughs> Very low energy. Super low energy, Dave. Super Chiara. low energy. There we go. On that Sorry, note. man. It's just <laughs> it's too hard for my dumb brain to do. It's all right, man. It's all right. Everyone's like, how do we do this? How how do we go forward? How do we change this the the status quo? Very, 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 very simple. Action. We talked about this earlier this year. Action. It's gonna take you mo- picking up and moving to areas and becoming literally ungovernable. And people don't understand this. They don't get it. It's going to take movement. You're not going to change your whole. It's not good. You're going to have to pick your family up and move Most likely, and, and join yeah. people yeah. with the same ideals as you, not in a forced collectivist ideal set, but more of a protectionist tribal mindset. And until that's adopted, we are literally still adrift at the wind at this. What do we do ism? And I just gave you what do we do? Yeah. And people don't well, want again, to accept it, but, but that's what's yeah, got to happen. Well, I, again, I, if it's if it, things are going to naturally drift that way, libertarian anyway, and cap, earlier. you know, agorist communities are going to have to start being built up. Well, they are. People are going to have to see the shining light on the hill. You know what I'm but, saying? They're going to have to see, hey, I can move there and live with people just like that. They are. That's got to happen. We've we've discussed it before. People like Derek Bros and his freedom cells. There's other people I know that are starting up different communities in different places and places like Ohio. Well, and there's Tennessee. the Vanu thing, and then there's um, the. Well, the the Vanu the Vanu is something uh, something else. I don't think I don't think too many people are actually doing that at the moment. We're, they're 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 just rediscovering it after it kind of been buried for a couple of decades, <laughs> uh, because our friend Shane Radliff and uh, what and. Uh, Actually, now a re- reoccurring guest of the show, uh, of our show, Jason Booth, and uh, what's the other guy, Kyle, uh, have been putting that the Vanu stuff out for a couple, I guess, two years now, maybe. But yeah, I, I don't know if anybody's actually doing that type of stuff right now outside of Kyle. <laughs> I think he's trying to live, live live that lifestyle. I don't know if anybody else is actually trying that, but uh, there's other there's other communities popping up, and again, you know it. It may not be for everybody, although a lot of people may have uh, reservations about it because they're, you know, they just don't realize how easy some of this can be, as long as you, you know, you're smart about it. You know, just, little cooperation, yeah, little sacrifice. Exactly, you know, it's it's something I'm looking to do. That's it's, why, it's that's why I'm lo- one of the re- one of the huge. Do you want reasons everyone else to do this for you, or do you want to do it? That's the question. You know, do you want the world to just change, hopefully for the better? you know, or do you want to get out and do it? And most people it's when they want to talk all day online, but actually getting out and working. No, thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, for for my, right, uh, for my final thought, I yeah, would just ahead. like to add um, that another thing you can do is to become indispensable, become invaluable, make yourself the center of the community in as far as you can. I mean, obviously we're all limited by what we can and can't do. And we all have our limitations, but the best way I found to convince people about what we believe in and our value set and our beliefs and our culture is to be the guy that everybody trusts is to be indispensable, to be the one guy that everybody else, when they hear him talk, when you go talk to them, they're like, you know what? I'm not too sure about that, but I definitely trust this guy. So I'll take his word for it. (laughs) Seriously, yeah. no, I have it's... had nothing but success in being somebody that people trust outside of what I'm trying to tell them. Oh, of course, that's that's a great point, and uh, yeah, I think again, I'm I'm hoping to get to get a chance to to start over with that in the next place that I move to. Um, unfortunately, my reputation has been tainted here. Just uh, uh, just don't pull box cutters on uh, reporters. Yeah. You'll be fine. It wasn't a box cutter, but yes. Um, anyway, basically a box cutter. Day like of the buck knife is at hand. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> we get a, uh, we, a little more. Buck knives are right more get going out of the choppers. <laughs> right out of the choppers. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fair Anyways, enough. let's end this show up before it gets too crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so this, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. 
All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Uh, our Patreon is still up and running. Another episode just came out a day or two ago. And uh, I still have plenty more stuff to put out. So as I've said, you know, that we've definitely stepped up the content, uh, the, uh, you know, content production there. And uh, I hope to have some more stuff in the future. So thank you, everybody who continues to donate and anybody who uh, who isn't, uh, please consider going over to our page and checking it out and donating. I, I think it's still set as low as a dollar an episode um, or maybe five dollars a month or something like that. Uh or less. I don't even. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a dollar an episode. You can get access to it. It might be a dollar a month. I think. I yeah. think that's what's current set at. Yeah. So even better. So right. as that's all we ask for is a dollar a month. As low you know? as a dollar. That helps a month, fund everything. Which is currently. Uh, which is currently. You know, f- at least four episodes a month are coming out. So you you'll want to hear Andre's silky smooth buttery voice. You keep paying the dollar a month. Okay? <laughs> Give me Alex Jones this for a second. Look, folks. If you want to hear Jeremy talk, pay the dollar a month. Confused. It went from Andre to me, but anyway, we're so, we're, yeah. the, we're the smell of the rear, <laughs> and uh, oh, and in all, the rear with the gear. All right, stop, 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 stop. Thank let's, you for let's that. Just let Jeremy also, uh, also, uh, we we finally got some Amazon purchases on our Amazon affiliate link that finally went, yeah. that finally went through. So thank you, people who Yay. kept trying. And uh, got us some things that actually got shipped. Is that the uh, old one I set up, or did you set up a new one? No, I set up a new one that we I, we've talked about on okay, the show a couple times. <laughs> we, we kept getting uh, rejected for like every everything like uh, fifteen things got ordered, like fifteen to twenty items got ordered in the first uh, like week of us having it up. And we didn't get credit for any of them. And the claim, whenever I whenever I inquired about it, was always that they they looked at it and they had determined that I somehow had a connection with this person. And uh, you know, like it, it was like it was insane. It was like they they uh, they negated things that Michael Dean ordered and a couple other a uh, couple other like friends of mine um, who were just like fans of our show and tried to use it and they like somehow found it like obviously some connection somewhere on some social media site they determined oh no but you guys know each other sorry <laughs> and uh, but yeah we finally got some things to go through so um, thank you people for continuing to try so anybody else uh, the link will be in the show notes but please consider using our our Amazon link uh, our friend Paul who does all our current web hosting and stuff uh, was supposed to get the Amazon banner up on the website I don't think he's done so yet um, so Paul when when you listen to this because I know you will please uh, go click that link yeah please, please get that li- please li- please get that button up on the uh, on the website until then. You know, I'll have the I'll have the link posted, and uh, please consider using that when doing yeah, your Paul. Amazon shopping. You know what we should do, uh, especially we with the set holiday up shopping. Paul a Bitcoin account. We should set up Paul a Bitcoin account that anybody can send him Bitcoin to help pay for hosting us. That would be cool. I'm do I'm going to do that. Okay, so yeah, you do that and give me the address, and I'll, I'll put that in the show notes along with uh, our, all of our other uh, crypto addresses where you can uh, donate to he us. You can just throw his so address wish. up on our site. He could do that too. Somehow, I, somehow, I'm feeling he'll do that quicker than he will uh, getting that Amazon link that I've asked for <laughs> times. Um, but Don't hopefully, roast uh, the guy. Come on. Hopefully, at least he'll at least do two to two better. Well, no, he's out there roasting me on. He Facebook. isn't even here to defend himself. He's out there roasting me. On oh, oh, Facebook oh, oh! Currently. Before I, before I forget, before I forget, before we close out the show, I'm sorry I forgot about this. Uh, can I plug uh, the GoFundMe that I started recently, real quick? Oh, sure. Yes. You can okay. Tell so, uh, the link, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give everybody the link. But, uh, okay, so everybody listening, um, I have a very good friend of mine who is a uh, professional author and editor. Um, we help run a uh, writing workshop thing out of Steemit uh, to help people for free. We just donate our time to help people improve their writing. Uh, but the other thing she, that she does is runs a, a um, an animal rescue in Tazewell, Virginia, and the place where she's at, pretty much nobody gives a shit about animal rescues, and they would just be, they would feel just as comfortable just shooting whatever stray dogs they find. So she has like zero local donations whatsoever, and nobody in the community cares about anything she's doing. Um, with winter coming up, uh, the building that she's in was built in the '40s, and it still has cloth wiring. Uh, so I'm trying to raise money to put in uh, new wiring so that she can install heaters to keep the animals warm. Um, anybody who's lived in the the south over by North Carolina, Virginia area and 
up into Maryland, that area, you know it gets cold as shit in the winter. Like Valley Forge was in Virginia. Uh, people died from freezing to death outside. So it gets cold. Um, I'm trying to raise some funds to uh, get some wiring installed and get some heaters installed. Um, I'll go ahead and give you guys the link for the GoFundMe. So uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll get the link for the GoFundMe. Um, and any little bit helps. I mean, even a dollar moves us closer to being able just, to pay for that. So chip in what you can. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I'll get you the link and it'll be on the show notes page. It'll be every, I'll give it to you guys. All right. Great. I'll, uh, I'll, add, I'll add that as well. So. All right. So once again, this has been the season of Liberty podcast and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace to the Middle East. sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com.